Okay, I'm gonna call this meeting of the Fayetteville Advertising and Promotion Commission to order. I'm Todd Martin, the uh, current chair of the uh, commission in representing the tourism and hospitality uh, industry. I am also joined by Chrissy Sanderson, also a tourism and hospitality representative, and Elvis Moya, who is also representing tourism and hospitality. Uh, online, we have Andrew Presby, uh, who is with us as our commissioner at large, and Sarah Bunch, who is a representative from the city council. Um, I'm gonna go right into our old business. Uh, the minutes from last month's meeting were mailed out to all of the commissioners and have been presented. I would ask if there are any additions or corrections to the minutes. Hearing none, uh, the minutes stand approved as presented. Uh, on to new business, Molly, CEO report. Thank you, thank you, Todd. Can um, the commissioners on Zoom hear me okay? Thank you for your patience. Um, before I get into the CEO report, I have um, an, an addition. We found a formula error in the spreadsheet containing the revised budget. We're not um, going to delve into that till later in the agenda. However, I do want to go ahead and let you know if you are a commissioner that is here and present at the meeting, Amy already passed to you the new revised version. You'll be able to notice it because the budget revision, it, it's, there's some red up at the top, it's a full color packet. Um, if you are a commissioner attending via Zoom, um, you should have gotten an email with that budget revision. If you did not, please raise your hand or signal to us in some way. And also if you're present here or a member of the media and you would like that packet, we'll make sure it's updated on the city site, but let us know if you don't have that update. Okay, jumping in to the CEO report, um, just a brief overview of a couple of things to expect in the coming months. In July, we will be hearing our audit uh, presentation from BKD. They've also are undergoing a rebrand and will no longer be called BKD. Jennifer, do you know their new name? Forward Forward Viz. For Viz. For Viz. Yes. Forward Vision. Forward for Viz will be presenting our uh, 2021 audit report at the July meeting. Um, in August, there will be a couple of RFPs that we'll be sharing with you that will be going out. And then um, at some point this quarter, we'll be hearing from Theater Squared. I'm not going to read all of the updates, but I will point out a, a few highlights. Um, we, uh, Jerrica Longville on our marketing team has been, uh, has developed a quarterly consumer leisure newsletter. Um, we have seen a lot of success with it. It will be going out um, hopefully Wednesday, but certainly sometime this week. Um, I want to make sure that all of you are on that newsletter and are getting it. You should be. If you are not, please let me know. Um, also, I'll be eager to share with you next month what we've learned from Buxton. Thank you. You'll recall uh, two meetings ago, you all approved the contract with Buxton as our research provider. We did some testing with that during Pride, and we're excited to see what that, uh, what that will tell us about visitation and um, attendance at that event. Um, the sales team, Tina and Julie, have been busy. Um, in particular, I wanted to remind everyone that shareholders was May 30th through June 3rd. It was great to have them back in person. Um, Fayetteville welcomed people from 24 countries. Um, it's a total of 3,500 hotel room nights and over 40,000 meals. So that's um, really great. We'll hopefully see the fruits of that in our HMR, MR, in our HMR numbers um, coming up soon. We were proud to help them with that event. Um, they also assisted the Fayetteville First Lego League Razorback Invitational, which is a um, STEM um, group in Fayetteville through, um, in conjunction with the engineering department at the University of Arkansas. And they brought in teams from seven countries and 28 states, 3,000 people in attendance. So um, Tina and Julie were on site there working to make sure that we can keep like, events like that in Fayetteville and serve those groups well when they are here. Um, jumping into cycling, you all will recall me talking about our dinner rolls programming. This was our pilot program to provide um, complimentary bike, bike valet at area restaurants. 
Um, Brandon spearheaded this and we learned a lot and I think that you will see that program come back in the future. It was good to test it out. Um, what we know is that like with anything there has to be a regular cadence to it and we have to do something like that with regularity. So we'll be working with some um, other volunteer groups to talk about how maybe we can set them up to put to to help us with uh, labor and, and staffing that but it was a, a great thing to do and um, our restaurant partners really appreciated it and you could expect to see it to see it come back in other uh, in other forms June has been a busy cycling month in the you know on the professional um, cycling scope the USA triathlon gravel and mountain bike national championships and the Highlands gravel classics um, both here in Fayetteville in June so no slowing down um, with regard to professional cycling events. Can I make a comment? Please. I just, we participated with the uh, Bicycle Friendly Business Boot Camp and got to tell you, Brandon did a great job with it and uh, quite frankly, I went in with one set of expectations and uh, of what small things we would do and unfortunately between Brandon and Leah Sanders it seems that we're doing a lot of big things at this point <laughs> um, but uh, pretty excited about it and I have to say that uh, the team at Theo's is exceptionally excited about what we can do going forward so I just wanted to pass that along that's uh, I think it uh, very much exceeded my expectations and uh, I'm excited to see that continue to progress in the city and good job to your team. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you shared that. I appreciate it, and I'll make sure that Brandon um, hears that. He works um, really hard to do, as does our whole team, obviously, but to do um, that outreach um, with businesses on how they can be more bike-friendly, um, because I think that's something that pays dividends well into the future for the businesses that um, participate. So thank you for sharing that. On the Visitor Center um, end of things, um, Saturdays continue to be our biggest um, our biggest days in the Visitor Center. That should not surprise anyone during farmer's market season. But our uh, visitation is up in May over April, 28% um, increase in visitors, and in terms of sales, a 19% increase. So we are pleased with the job that um, um, Eden is doing in the Visitor Center, and you can see um, how we continue to have a far reach in terms of places where our visitors hail from. On the community engagement and event front, um, June's first Thursday was not rained out. Very excited. We were able to host in bloom an estimated attendance of 2,700 people and the food trucks there reported over $8,000 in sales. Our art vendors sold over $6,500 worth of goods, and our host bar, so that's revenue to us um, being led by the town center, had $2,000 worth of sales. Um, Chloe also had a big month pers you know, with her personal professional growth. She was appointed to the Fayetteville Arts Council, so um, I know that she is grateful to Commissioners Bunch and Kenyon and the City Council for um, for that, uh, for, to the nominating committee for that nomination. I think that she will do an excellent job representing experienced Fayetteville, but creatives in our city in general on the Arts Council. And she also was the recipient of a, um, a grant through the um, Creative Exchange the Creative Exchange Fund and the Tyson Family Foundation. That's not an experienced Fayetteville grant. That is something that she um, received for her personal work, but I did want to just take a minute to officially congratulate her on it. So, Fayetteville Town Center um, hosted 10 events since this group um, last met. Um, we are um, taking the opportunity of what is still a slow event time. Um, the one, you know, the positive thing about that or the, I don't know if I would say a positive thing, but something to keep in mind is that the summer months at the town center are always slower. So we um, typically take advantage of those months to reassess the sales goals and targets for the venue and, and how we can regroup in order to have a great quarters three and four. Um, this year we are um, being particularly strategic in our thinking and, and this will be something that we will continue to discuss at future meetings and you'll see in the budget revision um, the it's a perfect storm of things happening at the town center right now of 
um, the um, social event, there, there, are, there, are quite, there is more competition on the social event front than there was when the building opened. Um, business and corporate meetings are still not back in person to the extent that they were pre-pandemic. There are still virtual options that uh, many people are opting for. And the life cycle of virtually all building systems and infrastructure is um, reaching its end all at the same time. So um, I won't sugarcoat that we have a lot of challenges to face at the town center. I will say I'm very confident in the leadership that we have there. Um, Tyler and his team are, um, are, are doing a great job and I feel like we are in good hands to um, figure out what the future holds. And that, those, that can be, I'm previewing that because I expect that that will be targeted conversations that we'll continue to have for the remaining remainder of the year. The Clinton House Museum, I'm not going to say much about because we're going to talk about that um, <clears throat> later in the meeting with a couple of, with a vote that is taking place. But I will say that the Clinton House uh, Museum Board of Directors has established their own account with Square. So um, they're able to sell their own inventory separate from the Experience Fayetteville inventory. It's just another step along the way and them being financially distinct from the A&P Commission. So as was directed and planned. Um, on the HMR and lodging front, we had 74% occupancy at our hotels in May. I'm going to pause for a minute. Oh, okay. Um, we had 74% occupancy at our hotels in May. It's a 15% increase over the prior May. Our year-to-date occupancy is 60%, so it's 8% over the prior year. Um, you can read through these. The real, I buried the lead. The really exciting thing and the most significant piece is that year-to-date, we've had a 21% increase in tax collections over the same period last year and the largest collection amount on record. So in terms of HMR, we are, um, our HMR collections, we are just doing um, incredibly well. And many of you might remember from last month, we had a little bit of an anomaly in that we had two months in a row where restaurant collections were down a little bit. It was just a small amount and I said I wasn't concerned. We have more than made up for that. Um, the, in May, they were up 12% and they're up 21% So I think over last year. So I think there were just a couple of months where we might have had some um, late, late payers, but also um, thank you to um, Garth Brooks and everyone that attended the Garth Brooks concert as uh, that was our best April. And I think that then that influenced the May collections. And so between that and the U.S. Pro Cup, we just had a really, really tremendous, tremendous April. So um, if anybody would like to bring in another um, best-selling artist to sell out Reynolds Razorback <laughs> Stadium, we would certainly appreciate it. <clears throat> um, financial reports, I will turn that over to Jennifer, but though I will add that we are very nearly at our budget. We're only 1% lower than we should be from revenue-wise. That's consolidated when you take all revenue in to account. So that's town center and Experience Fayetteville. So even with the town center falling a bit behind because Experience Fayetteville is ahead, it is evening out. Um, we are um, also mitigating um, that by our expenses are down 9% because we continue to be very, very prudent with our spending. Um, and, 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 and some of that also is the cyclocross, and I, I will let Jennifer talk more about that when you, the one-time infusion that that, that that brought forward. So I will, unless there are questions for me about the CEO's report, I will, well, I guess that's your job. I'm done with the CEO's report. <laughs> Thank you, Molly. Yes. Really quick to add in on that, Molly, and, and this may come later, but what, uh, based upon the position that we um, approved last meeting for the director of downtown initiatives, what is the time frame for the next steps on that? That is a great question. I expect that prior to us meeting again, um, we will, so right now the job description has not been posted. Once I'm able to meet with a couple of stakeholders, I do expect that I could get that posted by the end of the week. Once that is posted, um, I don't expect that at the July meeting we will have a new person hired. I do expect that at the July meeting we will have begun to call through applicants and have some really strong um, candidates, and I do expect us to have an offer made by the August meeting. So I think it's, it's reasonable to expect that you could have an update at the August meeting.
think our working time frame is August 1 to have somebody in place. That may be too aggressive, but it's an objective. And I would say that by August 1, I would love to have someone offered the job and accepted, and then it would then depend on, of course, there. We have to be mindful that they might need to put in notice somewhere. But it is always, I will, I will try to speed that along, knowing the expectation. All right, thank you, and thank you. Jennifer. Okay, May financials um, are included in your package. There are not formula errors in that spreadsheet, so it is stands as is. Um, for oh, oh. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I realized that I had not um, shared the screen for our Zoom attendees. I apologize. Uh, carry on. Okay, so um, at the end of May, the budget target's 42%. Um, and Molly did allude to this, but you'll notice that on our May financials, our total revenue is at 41%, so we're just 1% behind budget. We've closed that gap from the beginning of the year. Um, that is a significant uh, amount above budget on the experience Fayetteville side and we're running below budget on the town center side and you'll see that in the detailed financials. Um, on the expenditure side we're at 33% so we are about 9% below budget and net revenue as of the end of May is $438,000, which is great. Um, on the balance sheet, <coughs> our cash and investments together, so that's our liquid assets, are approximately $4.5 million at the end of May. That's exactly the same as the previous month. And the other interesting thing to note on the balance sheet is unearned revenue, so, which is a reminder, it's unbooked, I'm sorry, it's booked business that has not occurred yet at the town center. Unearned revenue is $124,000. Um, you'll see that number kind of hold through the summer and then it will fluctuate quite a bit in the last quarter of the year as we start to have events um, at the town center. And that is all I have on the financial reports, unless you have questions for May. Oh, I did fail to mention that for tax revenue specifically, at the end of May, when I seasonally adjust that, because we do have a little, it's not a straight line, we have seasonality in that, um, HMR tax revenue, year to date we're 6% ahead of budget for seasonality adjustments. So that's great, we're in a good place. Any questions for Jennifer? Um, can you speak to the significant, and forgive me um, if you did while I was battling with the technical, zoom. I wanted to know if you could mention the um, one time, or if you think that's more appropriate to bring up during budget revision, sure. the one time cyclocross overhead costs and how that impacts our position so in a unique way. I'll discuss that now. It has not been booked as of the May financials. It will okay. be booked in the June financials at mid-year. Okay. Um, so you don't see it reflected in the financials, but something to look forward to next month, and it's also in the revised budget is um, you know we had this cyclocross event the big events um, and that required a very large portion of our time and resources that were not grant funded so our salaries and um, some of our marketing expenses were not grant funded they were just ours so as a part of that grant budget we had an overhead or indirect percentage and i think it's about a hundred and it's somewhere around a hundred and sixty thousand dollars um, for the total grant, and that will come in one time as revenue for us um, now that that event has wrapped up. That is not, you know, year over year. It's just a one-time um, reimbursement for our staff time, resources, marketing dollars, all of that. Um, and so that will help us with some of the challenges we may discuss in the budget revision um, to really offset some of those issues. However, it will not be available in future years. So keep that in mind. Okay. Thank you. And we'll come back to the budget uh, revision for a vote at that point. Hazel. Yeah. There you are. Hi. Okay. Good we'll talk just about marketing. Yeah. yeah. Good afternoon. It was a busy May uh, for the marketing team. Um, as previously mentioned, we had our first Thursday um, of the season. 
and it was a really great opportunity because that's where that was our first time activating Vanny uh, at First Thursday, and it was really fun to see the kids uh, come over and it, it's some great photo opportunities, which I will let Mike speak on that. We also were a sponsor of Her Set, Her Sound. If you're not familiar, it is a DJ festival that highlights her, them performers. So it was really exciting to see last year, it was really successful and it was a one day event. Um, this year they expanded their programming at Prairie Street Live to Friday, Saturday, and Sunday and had more, a little more activations and uh, experience Fayetteville had a presence there. Um, let's, um, Hazel, I'm so sorry, I'm gonna, um, stop you for just a moment and I think we are having a um, um, I apologize I, I'm gonna just room I'm gonna host okay go 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 ahead did we I have no idea what happened yeah. to our and zoom the, yeah, we can start there. yeah if you can it's there. The zoom is still there. okay I was, I was trying to run that for you oh got it okay I'm not sure if I, okay got it okay okay got it there we go sorry thank you all for being patient with us as we there we go okay yes and wanted to report on social media just as a reminder this is organic social media so it's what our team does it's not paid social media um so facebook our page reach is a little bit down uh to 28 28.5 percent which this can it can have a lot of uh contribution to sometimes you know it depends on how many ads facebook is publishing at the time so there's only so much real estate so sometimes that affects organic uh page reaches uh page visits however are up 21 percent our new followers really jumped up last month and i'll tell you a little bit why here in a second so our total followers are up to 36,780 on Facebook. Um, Instagram doing really well. The page reach is up 13.8%. Page visits up 25.9%. Um, we increased our followers by 21.1 with a total following follower number of 58,834. So that's pretty good for a local uh, destination marketing organization where almost at the state level of Arkansas tourism, almost reaching them. Um, and then if you will scroll over a little bit, yes. Molly, Sorry. I wanted to show um, website referrals from organic social, assisted social conversions, which means how many people are leaving social to go to the Experience Fayetteville website is up 321%. So we took a little bit of a deep dive on why that is. And the reason is mo a lot of that is pride. Mm. So a lot of uh, our pride page on Experience Fayetteville was used as a resource a lot. So thus the increase in followers as well as uh, on Facebook. Um, some local, some local and regional marketing activities. Is that the next? Yes. Okay. Good. My Google track this way. Sorry, Andrew. There we go. Um, I've mentioned this in previous meetings, but our pocket guide, which is a condensed version of the visitor's guide, um, will be delivered this week, uh, just in time for summer travel. Something exciting. Uh, our regional campaign also starts this week with our new creative, and I will let Mike talk a little bit more about that. Um, we have also been working with an influencer company, and so during Pride, we launched our first campaign. It was Pride uh, to focus on Pride. So that was our first time, and we have many more um, that we will be focusing on as the year, as the year, uh, as we go through the year. And then the last one for me is the next page. Um, thank you to Tina. We've been working with her. Um, the marketing team um, has been working with her on um, some motor uh, on a motorcycle shoot with Arkansas Department of Parks and Tourism. That's happening this week. Um, so we'll we're in need of updated very much updated photo uh, for motorcycle, uh, motorcycling. And the other thing is a little bit of shift and focus to adventure cycling. So a little bit of gravel, similar to gravel cycling. So there's a lot of comparisons there and a lot of routes are very similar. So um, shifting a little bit of focus on that with Tina's leadership and that shoot will be happening this week. And with that, I will turn it over to Mike. Yes. <clears throat> 
Thank you. Um, oh, one, one uh, piece of advice for everybody, never use an ink pen to try to get air out of a tire of a car tire, because when you do, it blows up on you. Um, yeah, uh, I learned that this morning. Um, I was today years old when I learned that. Um, so, uh, one of the- Continue watching for other life tips. <laughs> <laughs> Follow me on Instagram. Yeah. Um, oh, speaking of, uh, that was the segue for uh, influencer campaign. So one of the, one of the, the newer media tactics that uh, we're, doing this year for Experience Fayetteville is uh, influencer uh, marketing. And that really launched for the first time for Pride. Um, and uh, it went well. It, it, is, it, it, it was something that happens in, in the moment and then something that happens after the moment. And uh, there's a lot of learnings from it, I would say, for our team, the media team, uh, and Experience Fayetteville marketing team, and so we're going to take what we learned from this uh, for Pride, and we will be implementing and, and doing more influencer marketing around the food scene, outdoors, nightlife, motorcycling, and craft beer between now and the end of the year. Um, the second bullet point there, cycling initiatives are being reviewed, discussed, and so there's been a lot of talk about, we have a lot of we have a lot of uh, raw cycling assets, photography, video, et cetera, and so uh, we are working right now on a recommendation to bring to the, to the marketing staff of here's some things that we think will continue that and build on the momentum for, for cycling, not motorcycling, uh, in Fayetteville in the years ahead, and here's some creative uh, tools that we think uh, are gonna be important and some ways to implement those. Uh, last week was a big week, uh, and, and Hazel mentioned uh, the, the new camp branding campaign launched. Uh, that was all the different creative elements with the exception of the video. So last week, the video was being filmed. It was the le weather outside was great for all the people on the shoot. Um, uh, yeah. yeah, wasn't scorching at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the vast majority of the shoot happened outside. So Hazel, Susie, John, and others uh, they, they, they were out there in the elements last week in a big way. Uh, but we will be excited to share with you the new branding video elements uh, in, in the coming weeks. Uh, and then there was also a photo shoot last week, uh, building the, continuing to build the photo library and update uh, some of our imagery. Then on website engagement, uh, I talked last month about the website redesign um, and, and sh shared some data about how we feel like it's working well. Since that time, we have implemented a new EAT page, um, and so that's one of our main navigation elements on the, pay, on, on, on the website of Experience Fayetteville. From, after we implemented that from May 20th through June 13th, we had 1,163 page views or 864 unique page views on the EAT page. On that page, there's two buttons, action buttons, and one of them is to look at a dining guide flipbook style or look at a dining guide by downloading the PDF. And basically all that's saying is that of all the traffic that went to the EAT page, almost 25% of the people that went to that page downloaded the guide or viewed the flipbook. And so that's very high engagement uh, for, any, for, um, for traffic to any uh, website page. So we were very pleased with that. And then the last of all, just some trends, and I don't know if y'all saw the story in the Democrat Gazette this morning uh, that they talked about the Longwoods, a new Longwoods report talking about travel and how <coughs> gas prices and inflation are impacting that and really getting people to stay closer, which uh, was really a testament, I think, to our initial, some of our initial planning in terms of our geography kind of matched with what uh, the state of Arkansas is now going, oh, maybe we need to be focusing on this area. Um, and it's like, yeah, we were already focusing on that area. Um, but the good news is, is that travel spending is now, for the first time, above 2019 levels uh, nationwide. Uh, that's reflected in the, in the collections that, uh, uh, that Molly talked about in terms of collections for May. Um, and then more than a quarter of travelers plan to spend more this summer over their 2019 budgets. Um, and six and 10 say it's uh, rising gas prices are gonna impact their decision on where to travel in the next six months. Um, and then 
back to the town center in essence. Um, one in 10 meeting, that's meeting and convention. One in 10 meeting and convention planners business is back to 2019 levels, but 65% don't expect the meeting and conventions business that they represent to get back to 2019 levels until 2023. So that is still the pandemic, post pandemic is still creating uh, issues in that meeting and convention space. Thank you. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Molly. Any questions? Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, the next item on the agenda is uh, a vote on our budget res uh, revision. Uh, Molly, uh, am I giving that to you or Jennifer for uh, initial For discussion? me to start and then we will just share. Okay. We can go back and forth if that's okay with you. Absolutely. Um, bringing forward a budget revision is something I want us to, um, we should probably get in the habit of doing. It is not uncommon um, for that to happen with an organization our size mid-year. Um, we do our very best to predict um, and make educated, um, do an educated analysis of our revenue and expense and as we um, get further into the year and see what the trends are, We the, the more precise we are able to be. And so we are bringing a budget revision forward. Um, you have, just to kind of give you the lay of the land of what you have, you have a one sheet that says consolidated budget at the top. This is all, everything rolled together. So this is the town center and experience Fayetteville. This is really a summary page. Then you have Experience Fayetteville details and Town Center details. Um, I will tell you overall, like I got a couple of them. Um, we are predicting, or we are budgeting for um, increased revenue on the Experience Fayetteville side um, and decreased revenue on the Fayetteville Town Center side. So that's just an overall, you know, 50,000 foot view. On the expense side, really on the, um, the expense side is not where the um, majority of the changes are. The majority of the changes come from predicting less revenue uh, with the exception of payroll. On the Experience Fayetteville side, primarily, but really overall, this adjustment shows um, us uh, increasing our payroll cost. Part of that you expected due to um, changes that the commission um, voted on um, during my performance review, which thank you, I certainly appreciate. But then also um, I took very seriously the need to right size that and to look at um, staff compensation, which we have um, are proposing in this budget revision. Um, additionally, um, those are the, those are the top line things. And then I will, we can go into more detail over over each, I may turn it over to Jennifer now if you have anything that you'd like to add. Um, I'll add just a couple of details. Okay. Um, okay, so one of the main reasons that the revenue is revised upward on the experienced Fayetteville side is for that one time contribution that we just talked about of, from Cyclocross. Indirect and I uh, excuse me that number was hundred and sixty eight thousand um, dollars I think I said 160 earlier and So that's the main reason for the increase on that side um, We did also if you're looking in if you're down in the details and, and on other revenue There was some variation there as well for the Dixon Street Art Court grant it's important to understand that the details of the operations of that grant have not changed, but because of the delay, I believe we're just talking about the ground lease today, because of the delay in getting started on those operations, we're shifting grant funds out into future years, or we may not even need them depending on the length of our contract. So we received a full year of grant support last year that has carried over. We have not utilized any of those grant funds yet because we have not started operating that facility. That's the reason for some of those adjustments. And uh, when she talks about the one-time um, overhead cost, that's on the Experience Fayetteville side and that's uh, 48,000 other revenue. That's what that 168,000 mm -hmm. is. 
you will notice that our HMR revenue, we are budgeting the same, no change um, in the revised budget from the original. That's correct. And we likely will beat that number, but we wanted to be conservative with this budget revision. Um, on the Fayetteville Town Center side, you will note that on the revenue side, primarily the decrease is, um, it's really across the board in all of those revenue items. That's because they are all related. They're just various aspects of utilizing this building and the money that comes in. And because the overall business volume is down, we are um, creating sort of a downward shift in those expectations for the remainder of the year. Um, you may also notice that, especially in the uh, very first, on the town center, in the very first part of the expense codes, the 50,000 numbers, those numbers are also lowered in the revised budget, and that's because those are directly related to events. They're direct event expenses, and so as that revenue goes down, those expenses go down. The rest of the expenses kind of happen whether we're busy or not. Um, Molly or Jennifer going into uh, the main budget for experience pay bill, bill on promotion. In the original budget, it was $280,000 for promotion. Down to $205,000. Can you explain what that $74,000, where that would have moved to, um, and then reasoning behind the promotion line being cut? Yeah, um, so a lot of the promotion expense line is always one that is, um, there are two main things that go into that. One is the photo and video. We budgeted, I believe, $60,000 this year for photo and video. We are absolutely not cutting that. We will spend every single bit of it. The rest of the, um, another big chunk of what is in promotion is really um, money to be able to be opportunistic. So it isn't, uh, it's, a, it's a lot of contingency. It is not necessarily, it's not paid, it's not our paid media budget, it's not our community engagement budget like for things that are first Thursday. It's things that come along, whether it be activations with the van or new programs that we wanna bring forward. And so we always want to, with the best of intent, budget really well in that area. But when we got to mid-year and looked at what we had already spent, making sure we left enough in there to do the photo and video, then looking at the time that we have remaining in the year, we're not going to be able to activate all of the program that we hoped. So it is, I look at it as, as less of a cut and more of a, um, just a reprojection of what we're going to be able to achieve. Um, also, you will notice that conversely, the um, sales and development, that those expenses went up a little bit. Um, we looked at, you know, the need to be able to um, look at things like our promotional items and our tourism and client development um, and incentives to be able to, um, things for, for Tina and for Julie and for her team to be able to bring new events to town. We, um, I would rather have more money in that sales line than in that promotion contingency line. Did that answer your mm -hmm. question? Okay. Yep. Any further questions for Jennifer or Molly with regards to the budget revision? So again, the bottom line, <clears throat> the original budget had us um, projecting to make 209,000. We're still positive at 37 with the revision uh, consolidated. That is correct. Before well, our capital. But, right. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, did you have something? Um, no, I was um, looking at the wrong page. That is correct. Okay. So any further discussion? If not, we'll... Oh, do, I'm, I'm, sorry. I'm so Go sorry. Ahead. Do we have... Uh, Andrew, do you have... I have had you hidden, so you could be raising your hand. Or... Nope. Or unmuting. I don't... I didn't want to... Okay, then great. Then pardon the interruption and no. No, no problem. So um, we'll go ahead and proceed to vote. Uh, commis uh, Commissioner Presby? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Sanderson? Uh, yes. Commissioner Moya? Yes. And I also vote yes. I believe Commissioner Bunch had to excuse herself. 
So um, with a vote of uh, the majority passing with the quorum, that uh, the budget revision is approved. Um, next up, thank you everyone. Next up will be a uh, discussion around the Clinton House Museum and the budget allocation transfer from 2022 to the Clinton House. Yep. Molly. Thank you. Um, this is fairly straightforward. Um, as you all know, we had an amount in our um, original budget. That amount did not change in the revised budget that you all just voted to approve. Um, and that was money that we had allocated as experienced Fayetteville staff to spend on behalf of the Clinton House Museum. Um, it was important and it was, um, you know, a learning process for me as well that um, in order to really separate what needed to happen is the Clinton House Museum and its board of directors needed to be responsible for paying their own bills rather than us taking our staff time and resources to pay for things on their behalf. We needed for them to be able to do that and they um, have a board now that is willing and able to do that and has absolutely been welcoming of that change. Um, that also allows them to um, manage their money and, and, and take advantage of, um, of um, sorry, I lost my train of thought, opportunities for savings that as a small nonprofit they may be able to uh, achieve that, that, that we cannot. And so my recommendation is that the, um, and I'm gonna turn it over to, to uh, Dr. Steve Smith, who's president of their board, um, but my recommendation is to pay out their remaining budgeted amount that has been uns unspent to their, uh, to the Clinton House Museum Foundation so that they may, um, sorry, utilize that to continue um, the operations and for us to also do that with the remaining inventory that we have on our books that is at the Clinton House Museum. And just as a reminder, this is inventory that um, we would not sell at Experience Fayetteville. This is hyper specific to that museum um, that really we have no, um, it makes sense there. We have no need for it at our visitor center. So I'll turn it over to Steve. Thank you very much. Thank you. Members of the commission, uh, and thank you for 17 years of supporting heritage tourism in the Clinton House Museum. Uh, I'd also like to praise uh, Molly and her outstanding staff and experience fail. We've been uh, extremely helpful to us as we make this transition and, and uh, become a separate entity. And I'd also like to recognize the outstanding board of the Clinton House. Since February, I've been president of that board. <clears throat> a number of things have happened this year that I, uh, we're excited about, and I think you will be too. Uh, the first is that we were successful in getting uh, support from our partner at the University of Arkansas in uh, waiving our rent payments uh, through the end of next year. And uh, <clears throat> Molly was certainly instrumental in, in negotiating that along with the Secretary Hurst. Um, as soon as uh, they have their uh, permanent administrative team uh, in place there, then we'll go back and negotiate the uh, future from that. Uh, we had, as I mentioned, sort of alluded to, we had multiple meetings with uh, Secretary Hurst from the uh, Department of Parks, Heritage, and Tourism. She's been very supportive. She's uh, working with the university on our behalf, <laughs> and she uh, alerted us to two potential grant opportunities uh, for the museum through that, and we've uh, already made application to one. <clears throat> As uh, you probably know, we are now reopened on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Um, <clears throat> we're excited about that. Um, and we've had uh, wonderful traffic through there. Uh, I said one. Our average uh, count is about 12 visitors a day. Uh, and annualized with you know, three days a week for, for a year. That's only 1,500, which I think is, uh, well, it, it's better than it was last year when we had zero. But, uh, <laughs> we, we've been closed for two years. Uh, we haven't done any uh, targeted paid advertising or publishing. You know, we've had a very good news coverage. Uh, Stacy Ryburn had an article in the 
Northwest Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Um, Greg Harden featured it on his podcast. And uh, today, uh, Randy Dixon has a show on KUAF where he'll be talking about the Clinton House Museum. So we're getting a lot of coverage of people becoming aware <coughs> that it's open. So we'll increase our, uh, our advertising. And <coughs> our hope is uh, with expanded operations, uh, we can get 5,000 visitors a year, which was our peak before the pandemic. We've had a, a soft launch on our uh, membership drive and uh, <coughs> our annual plan uh, campaign. We now have the square set up so we can do gift shop sales. There will be some revenue uh, coming in from that. We've uh, partnered with the Special Collections at the uh, University of Arkansas Library. They're going to uh, assess and uh, process and hold our records for the museum, our, our corporate uh, nonprofit records there. Uh, that'll save us uh, it's, it's more than $1,000 a year that we're paying for storage on those in the facility. Um, there are two other grant proposals that we have uh, submitted. One is to the uh, City of Fayetteville for the uh, Rescue Act for uh, $39,000. And another to the Women's Giving Circle University of Arkansas. This is one I'm really excited about. It's only a $5,000 grant, but it includes uh, doing interviews with people who knew Hillary Rodham when she was on the law faculty in Fayetteville in those years. And our, that's sort of an area in all of the published biographies that get overlooked a lot of times. So we're going to fill that in. And the other part of it is to set up augmented reality on the exhibits so that when you, you'll just download an app that we'll create. And when you come to exhibit, uh, to, and so you see not only whatever the exhibit is there, but you might see text documents or videos or audio recordings of uh, President Clinton or Secretary Clinton talking about that room when they lived there and what they uh, did in Fayetteville. So I think it's a it will be a great addition to the museum if we get funded. Um, as Molly mentioned, uh, we're in the process of hiring a bookkeeper to pay our bills and keep up with, with everything on a daily basis and take uh, give some relief. But what I, what I also want to, want to do is look, sort of let you know what's going on in the future. We are organizing what's called the Golden Anniversary Capital Campaign that will go between now and October of 2025, which will be the 50th anniversary of uh, Clinton's marriage in the house and also uh, their purchase of that house. And um, next quarter, uh, or at least before the budget process here, uh, I'll be back uh, with a proposal for uh, continuing some financial support from the, from the commission uh, during this transition where we hope to be fully self-sufficient and endowed operating budget. And I'd be glad to take any questions you have or suggestions. I'll be glad to show up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any. Thank you, Steve. It's been great to see the, the board um, thrive under your leadership, and um, I'm excited about all that they have going on. Any questions from the commission? Commissioner Presby, I know you're uh, online there. Throw it to you yeah, first. No, that's, that's all great information. It's, it's really exciting. It sounds like you guys are definitely moving things in the right direction, so that's very exciting. Thanks. We appreciate your support very much. Uh, I need permission from the board. I'd like to uh, be able to contact uh, fans sometime in the next couple of months to talk about a memorandum of understanding. Um, I think that maybe the, the uh, I don't want to speak out of turn, but maybe the way to do that is for you and I to work on the member. You mean between the A and P and the yes. and the CHM? Okay, and then send it to the board to review. How would you like for that to flow? Uh, however, you would like for it to flow. Okay. And um, of course, uh, um, you know whatever would also most accommodate Steve. So, okay. Yeah. I think that let's start working on that together, you and I, and then get to alignment and then send it to you and. Or, or you and Mark or whomever on the board you would like to 
if you have an attorney you want us to include in on it or if it just needs to go to you as the no, board. It's free advertising. <laughs> Quick question as it relates to uh, your request. Thank you for coming in and speaking to us today. Uh, the request that you had mentioned about uh, coming back into the board and asking for additional funding or support, uh, would that have any impact on the current budget that we just voted upon? Okay. And okay, so that would not. I would not rec be recommending additional funding this year. I would be uh, welcome of a proposal from the Clinton House Museum Board to include additional support in next year if they wanted to come and make that before we, the 2023 budget. Gotcha, perfect. Perfect. Well, I will say from my perspective, I think that Everybody knows that I've been probably one of the most vocal people about the Clinton House Museum over the last uh, 18 to 20 months. And I think that, uh, you know, the recommendation before us and uh, Steve's leadership is certainly in keeping with what I had hoped would happen with Clinton House. You know, that uh, the Clinton House Foundation, uh, Museum Foundation would be able to step in and uh, come forward with a plan that would help the Clinton House continue to exist and be a vital part of our community uh, without so much uh, effort from uh, Experience Fayetteville and be able to stand on its own in a lot of ways. So I'm very heartened by the work that you have done already and the, and the support that you've been able to garner through uh, the university. And uh, you know, I've got win friends at the Women's Giving Circle also, so I'm glad to hear that you're able to work with them as well. I appreciate very much your support and your taking the time to meet with me and advise me on some things that are always very helpful. Yes, sir. Okay, so we have a recommendation for a motion in front of us um, that we need to turn into a motion. So the recommendation is that the Clinton House Museum be allowed a budget allocation transfer um, of $23,000. Is that what I think it is? Um, I would ask that you refer to the memo rather than the language in the memo rather than okay, the Okay, well, I'll agenda. refer to the language. Um, that way, so the 23000 figure is at the printing of the memo and of the publishing of the packet, what the amount was. That could by now be... 22468. I, I don't know. So rather than put an amount on it specifically, I would encourage us to say the remaining amount. The remaining balance. Okay. So we need a motion in front of us to transfer to the Clinton House Museum the remaining balance of the Experience Fayetteville budget for running through 2022. Does that and work for you? Possibly a donation of the Clinton House Museum inventory. Okay. And you books. could just. Read out okay, the I'll read out the staff recommendation. <laughs> I have my glasses on and I can look at the bold. Thank you. <laughs> so we need a motion to authorize CEO Molly Ron to pay out the remaining 2022 budgeted support in a single payment to the Clinton House Museum and donate the Clinton House Museum inventory to the Clinton House Museum. So moved. Second. Thank you both. It has been properly moved by Commissioner Sanderson and seconded by Commissioner Moya that we authorize uh, the CEO, Molly Ron, to pay out the remaining 2022 budgeted support in a single payment to the Clinton House Museum and donate the Clinton House Museum inventory to the Clinton House Museum. Commissioner Presby, how will you vote? Uh, I agree. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Commissioner Moya? Yes. Commissioner Sanderson? Yes. And I also vote yes, so the motion passes. Thank you very much for the written piece, and Steve, for your participation as well. And Steve, are you all, uh, is there a plan for uh, maybe a weekend opening or with the kickoff of the campaign, anything yes. particular on that that we might be able to get information on? Yes. Uh, I've with Molly and Okay. I don't have details yet, but yes, I will soon. Yeah. Okay. Very good. All right. Our next agenda. Our next agenda item is to vote on agreement with Art Court LLC for a three-year lease of the Dixon Street Art Court uh, for one dollar. The lease agreement is attached in your packet, Molly. 
Okay, thank you. So this is the um, Dixon Street Art Court um, funded by the Tyson Family Foundation. It's been um, a few months now, but you all will recall Jordan Garner, who is their representative, came and spoke to us um, about the art court and they have had some um, construction delays and are wanting it, it it is, it, is, it is time now to move forward as the um, end is in sight and the completion of the space is in sight. Um, we are um, tentatively planning on um, hoping to be able to open it to the public. Um, um, if not before our next meeting, then uh, potentially, uh, potentially within the next two months. And so um, I believe it's time to go ahead and bring the lease forward. Um, this is the lease agreement that they drafted. Um, I am, I have learned over the years that there may be some um, changes to the, the, the legalese that, that, that our, um, that Vince and the Tyson Family Foundation attorney may need to work through. I will tell you that um, in terms of the, what I would call the, the bulk of the lease, the premises, the term, it's a three-year term, the payment, it's $1. Um, there is nothing in here that really surprised me. And so um, once, we're, um, once we're able to be given a, a, a full um, okay um, from legal, I am ready to move forward with your approval. Is there any questions or comments from the commissioners? The chair will entertain a motion to authorize the CEO, Molly Ron, to sign an agreement on the terms of a three-year agreement at the uh, amount of one dollar, pending whatever the final legality agreement is. There, uh, so entertaining a motion, I need a motion and a second. I, mo I move. Thank you, Commissioner Sanderson. Is there a second? Second. Second. Okay, so we have two seconds. That's awesome. Um, so it has been properly moved and seconded to authorize CEO Molly Ron to enter in and sign a lease with regards to Dixon Street Art Court LLC for a term of three years and an amount of one dollar. All right, Commissioner Presby. Uh, Commissioner Moya. Yes. Commissioner Sanderson. Yes. And I also vote yes. So that will approve uh, approve that, your ability to go and do that and sign that. Thank you. Okay, that's the last item on our agenda. With no further agenda items, do you have any announcements, Molly, before we close? Not at this time. Okay, thank you. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, so moved. <laughs> it has been properly moved and seconded. All those in favor of adjournment, please say aye. 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 Very good. Thank you, everyone. The meeting is adjourned.